I found out about Harriet Jacobs through my aunts. They'd sent me a book, I think when I was about 13 or 14, my aunt Joyce. And it was um, six different narratives from enslavement. So it was um, Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington and James Weldon Johnson. and, and um, But it was incidents in the life of a slave girl that I was drawn to because it was the only thing that was written by a woman. And I was fascinated by her story. I, I've reread it so many times since, and it's so painful to read because it feels as though there's going to be a particular outcome and then there isn't. And you, you, you feel the way in which this young girl who should have been born free because her grandmother was actually free and freed in, in several different circumstances, but kept being pulled back by this, this lasso of this illegal illegal and legal practice um, and the girl is born and she doesn't have her parents her parents pass away and she's uh, looked after by a grandmother and she is introduced into her, her status as, as an enslaved girl and she she grows up to be a teenager and the person who becomes her master develops this obsession with her Dawson he develops this obsession with her it's probably not called that, right? Because I just, yeah. But we just said Dawson. So I know. It's, I'm having a whole moment around it, too. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, please. I won't say his name, just in case. Yeah. But the person who is her master, the person who is um, in authority over her for this particular section of her life, he has this obsession with her. He doesn't allow her to marry someone she wants to marry. And he's trying to encourage her to come away from her life to leave her young children and live in this house in the woods that he wants to set up for her where she can be his his lover mm -hmm. and she has a fear of this and has a rejection of this and knows the only way she can get away from him is by running away leaving her children and running away and so she she escapes slavery and makes it seem as though she's fled north but really she stayed right on the edge of the plantation and she's hiding in the crawl space above her grandmother's house and, and storehouse. It's a space where you can't stand up and she stays there for seven years. So I remember reading this story as a child and thinking, how does she, how does she survive this? She's gone from slavery where there is a lack of freedom and someone controls what you do to a self-imposed confinement in order to gain eventual freedom I just I thought that was so it was so uh, it was such an amazing plan that she sort of she concocts you know you hear all these different flights from slavery of people, people posting themselves to other places and people hiding and people disguising themselves but this is very different. She she makes to move north, but she's actually nearby. And because she is here in her grandmother's space, she knows her children are nearby and her grandmother brings her children so that she can they can be near. They don't know their mother's there. And she bores this loophole in the in the clapboards so that she can see through this tiny space she can see her children growing up. So Peach Velvet Sky is about, you know, the, the sunsets that she can see through the, this tiny loophole. And I, I admire Harriet Jacobs' sort of mental fortitude and being able to last this incredible long period knowing that eventually she'll win her freedom, that she'll be able to save her children that will affect her children's children and going forward. And she lives into her 80s and she, she managed to be free. She never has exactly the same mobility because she's been in this cramped situation. But I remember her story and then being in this, in this library sort of reminded me of her and reminded me of the black books I have been able to access as a young person. So I went back to her story and back to it and back to it again and read it differently as a, an adult, read it differently as a mother. I read it differently as someone who is interested in this particular historical moment just towards before the Civil War but towards the end of slavery and the gamble that people are making 
is now the time? Is it safe to go now? Am I, what do I need to do? Do I need to survive so I can pass on my genes to the next generation? Do I need to survive so I can look after my children or do I take this huge risk which might lead to my death? And then what, can I, what protection can I give my children? But what protection can I give them anyway? This, this sort of, what do you do with the, type, the amount of agency that you have? How do you win yourself more agency, more power, more freedom? And it's, it's um, there's a so, so much courage. Uh, in, there's courage to stay, there's courage to leave. I, I, I uh, think a lot about these different decisions. Mm -hmm. I think about the decisions that will have been made in my line, mm -hmm. you know. Th yeah, that piece to me, it's so, you know, the thing about Jacob's, what I found so moving in the track is there are these encoded messages towards freedom, you know, like the, you know, I, I think a lot about um, this kind of ominous, you know, the, the fear and the kind of, um, I don't know how you, there, it's like an ominous, the pastoral, right? This kind of the vastness of land of escape is also marked by a certain kind of like danger, but it's a hopeful danger. And then Jacobs creates this garret, but the thing that has always kind of like blown my mind around, I mean, cause it's so unbelievable. Like it, you actually can't wrap your head around it as a, as, as someone's story. And yet like the thing that I always return to is that it's, it's sight. It's the opportunity to see mm. that gives her this power you know, right. that she can, now suddenly she's in the position to be able to see, like, over, you know, to kind of mark somebody's movements and yeah. to know when, you know, this horrid person is looking for her. You know, there's several times where she's like, oh, you know, she knows because she can see him. Like, yeah, and she can hear, when, when people are nearby, she can overhear voices. Yeah. So she can overhear him talking to her children saying, what kind of a mother would leave their children and, and fly and go north? She must not care for you at all. And the the various complex emotions that, that must have uh, brought up, including the feeling that he is wrong in his statement that she isn't north, that she's right there and she's right, she's right there. And there are two moments, she does appear to her children, doesn't she, in two specific moments in this, in this confinement. And they must have almost, they, they said they, they sell, sensed that she was near. Mm -hmm. So she has this kind of presence that can kind of go through this wall where somehow her children feel that she's near, but they, but they don't understand how they feel her, her spirit. And mm -hmm. that, that to me is really fascinating as well, that she can, she can sort of be, she can be inside of the space and outside of the space at the same time. That vastness, right? That kind of the presence of, like the the sky, mm. right? The peach velvet sky, the feeling to, of being able to kind of transcend by sight or something, you mm. know? It's a different kind of escape. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at. It's yeah. a different kind of, um, it's related to that thing we were talking about earlier of like visioning, like a second of freedom might yes. be able to like allow. To sustain you, to, you. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But it's, it's a totally different approach to thinking about like the encoded meanings of freedom or the way, you know, like someone might say North Star and you know what they mean. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. It's not, it doesn't require much um, detail from there. And to me, like that track really kind of gets us to thinking very critically around or just opening up the possibility that you might be you know, approximate to how many people walked under Harriet Jacobs and didn't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and walked yeah. past. And when she first escaped, she's hidden under the floorboards yeah. in a place, and the cook goes back and forth and is talking to herself, and there's flour falling through. And I just think that the, the, mm -hmm. the terror and then the ultimate feeling of relief, you know, I can't imagine when she finally does go north and she's on a boat, I can't imagine the... You know, she says the sky looked different and the, sh 
that her senses were completely different from having probably moving out of that cons confinement but also from knowing that this was a completely new chapter that she had, that she had made she had the agency and um i just think the determination of these people these young people this young woman it speaks so much to me and you know we're we all of us in a line of ancestors who have all survived in various different ways where wherever we come from in the world and wherever we you know they are they are the people who've been mentally and physically strong enough to to pass on to the next generation and so it's humbling and also it's um you know galvanizing and strengthening to think that these these people are in your bones and in your blood and you, you can make it and you can survive.